Chapter 1196, Selling Tang Xiao for Two Pieces of Clothes Tang Xiao elaborated all his plans again in the next half an hour and finally perfected a certain plan with Long Hanwen's assistance. Would you like to have breakfast here, Uncle Long? Tang Xiao asked with a guilty expression after they were done discussing the serious issues. No, Long Hanwen shook his head. I'm going back to prepare ahead of time since we finalized the plan. The mayor and some people from Harbo Group came to my residence when I was on the way to your house, so I'm going to deal with them first and wait for your arrival there. All right. Tang Xiao felt relieved and set the man out of the house with a smile on his face. As he returned back to the living room on the first floor, he saw that Andy had come out of the kitchen still in an apron. But seeing her delicate and cute face now had some black screens, makeup from pot bottom, he was unable to hold his laughter. She looked so distressed at this time. <laughs> Not like someone who can cook, indeed. Tang Xiao chuckled inwardly, but he kept a still and calm face on the surface. How good of you to proactively prepare breakfast, Andy. Did you just finish cooking? I'm starving. Andy glanced at Kong Xia and then stammered. Be boss, D did you mean it when you promised that? I may not be an emperor, but I always mean what I say. Tang Xiao nodded. After hearing this, Andy immediately continued, Kong Xia said that I must be able to handle both the main duty and kitchen work if I want to be your woman. She also said that you'll agree to let me be your woman if I can cook. So what I'm asking is, did you really mean what you said? Tang Xiao turned to look at Kong Xia and saw her nodding to him smilingly. Then, he slowly replied, I've tasted lots of delicacies and it's kind and I just can't wolf down any ordinary meals anymore. Well, I just lost my appetite since you can't cook, though. What do you know I can't cook? Andy acted angrily and shouted, you haven't tasted it yet. Tang Xiao stared dully for a moment and then carefully observed her expression for a short while. After seeing the anxiousness and fear in her erratically moving eyes, he said, I'll consider it if the meal you made tastes great. If it's just ordinary, you'd better listen to Kong Xia's arrangement to have some blind dates and find yourself a boyfriend fast. I don't think Andy will just give up if you don't give her a sure statement, boss. Kong Xia interrupted. Besides, you don't want to be entangled the whole time in the future, right? Tang Xiao gave it a thought and felt that Kong Xia was right. However, he was still not quite assured and then released his spiritual sense to check the dining room. There, he found four dishes had been served on the dining table. But the sight made him amused inwardly since the appearances of these dishes were truly appalling, especially that fish-like dish. That particular dish was obviously overcooked given how dark the fish skin was. I agree to accept you if the dishes you just made taste great, Andy. But if they taste bad and are not my standard, you're not to mention it anymore in the future since we are not fated, all right? Said Tang Xiao seriously. About that, all right. Deal. Andy turned around with a pitiful expression on her face. But her expression turned into a blooming flower-like, smiling face when Tang Xiao couldn't see it clearly. Even her footsteps looked unusually vigorous. After coming to the dining room with Tang Xiao and Kong Xia, she poured the hot pot soup from the casserole and gave a bowl of rice to Tang Xiao and Kong Xia each. After sitting across them, she said, eat it and then say what it tastes like. Kong Xia picked up chopsticks with a beaming face and chuckled when she clamped the chopped veggie dish. Well, I'm gonna act as a witness here, so my comment on the taste will definitely be genuine and fair. Having said that, she pinched a piece of spicy and sour shredded potato. The moment after, a curved arc sketched on the corner of her mouth as she looked at Tang Xiao and said, Well, this shredded potato tastes pretty good. Tang Xiao rolled his eyes at her in response and used his chopsticks to clamp the said spicy and sour shredded potato. But a short while after, his expression instantly froze after chewing it. The flavor tastes good. Despite having tasted lots of delicacies of various kinds, 
He must admit that this spicy and sour shredded potato did have a great flavor. After he swallowed the potato dish, he maintained a calm face and went to pick another dish. How was it? How was the flavor? asked Andy hurriedly. I just tasted a bite from one dish, so I'm holding my comment for now, all right, said Tang Xiao. I'll give you my full evaluation after I'm done tasting them all. Andy and Kong Xia reacted in a similar fashion and immediately wore smiling faces. Shortly after, Tang Xiao tasted the sweet and sour pork ribs, steamed egg flour fish, and the sweet and sour carp one. But after he finished tasting those three dishes, a regretful expression was evident on his face. I just got wrecked into the pit, huh? That was what he groaned inwardly and the most powerless groan he had ever had. At this time, he really couldn't understand why Kong Xia put forward that stupid and awful idea to make him fall into this trap. Each of these four dishes could be said to deserve a place as the best main course if they were served in those star-rated big restaurants. Despite having tasted various kinds of delicious dishes himself, he still had to admit that Andy's cooking level was truly above the roof. Kong Xia put down her chopsticks and smilingly said, All right, let me state my evaluation first. I think Andy's dishes taste great despite their appalling looks. I don't think some great chefs can make it more delicious. Tang Xiao's mouth twitched twice and was at a loss of how to respond for a while. Andy herself looked expectant. She stared at Tang Xiao and asked, You haven't given your evaluation yet, boss. Tang Xiao took a deep breath and reluctantly asked, Andy, have you really never had your hands on cooking before? While wearing an innocent face, Andy looked back at him with her big watery and intelligent eyes. I did some cooking before. I also hold a special chef's license myself and I've studied lots of Chinese dishes recipes and made lots of delicious dishes, based on them. Ah, uh, that's right. I used to be a three-star chef at the Michelin before. I. Tang Xiao's mouth was opened as he was heavily suppressed by the devastating blow brought by Andy's remarks. Kong Xia. His breathing turned rough as he yelled angrily. Did you deliberately prank on me or what? What the hell is going on with your head? Is it really fun to dig a trap for me to jump into? Kong Xia intentionally put on a face that looked like she had just been wronged. You can't blame me on this one, boss. Andy knows Avril, that world-class designer, and she's her best friend. She promised that she would give me two of Avril's latest designs, you know. Holy shit. Tang Xiao was completely flabbergasted. Never even in his wildest dreams did he think that he would be sold out just for two pieces of clothing. Imperial Dragon Villa was a newly developed villa complex in Star City's new metro. Among these villas was the most majestic king villa that was taken possession by Long Group for Long Hanwen, who had now moved there after the quick renovation project. The villa complex itself was now regarded to have taken the position of Southgate Town as the best and most upscale villa complex in Star City. At number one villa. Long Hanwen's sedan just stopped in front of the courtyard when he saw Li Yutao, the deputy mayor, sitting under the gazebo. Accompanying him were the newly appointed chief of the Public Security Bureau, Jiang Fei, and the head representative William of the U.S. Harbo Group for China. Around them were also four burly men in black suits, looking vigilant in their security duty. Deputy Mayor Li, Chief Jiang. Long Hanwen greeted them after coming over. Li Yutao and Jiang Fei got up, including William. I hope Chief Long can forgive and understand our visit so early in the morning. I know you're a busy businessman, but the pressure is mounting on us from the top, so we're also bound here, said Li Yutao with a smile. Deputy Mayor Li, I already know the purpose of your visit and what you want to say, replied Long Hanwen with a cold face. Let's spare ourselves the talk about this issue anymore. Additionally, the three of you also know how busy I am. Please forgive me since I don't have much time to entertain you. Afterward, he turned and headed inside the villa. Li Yutao forced a bitter smile and exchanged looks with Jiang Fei before he chased him. 
As he walked side by side with Long Hanwen, he spoke with a forced smile, Chief Long, I'm going to be honest with you. Harbo Group is indeed at fault on this matter. I would have been as furious as you if I were in your shoes as well. But the milk is already spilled and you've locked Solon for a day, shouldn't it be enough for your anger to dissipate already? Also, William is visiting in person in good faith to discuss the solution with you too. Negotiating for the solution, huh? Long Hanwen indignantly snorted. What big joke are you playing? My son is still lying in the ICU of Star City Chinese Medical Hospital with his life and death still unknown so far. Do you think I can just easily let this matter go? My door is open for negotiation if my son can recover, but I'll make that Cal Soland bastard pay with his life if anything bad happens to my son's condition. Chief Long, the Harbo Group is one of the world's top 50 corporations that has invested tens of billions of yuan in the southern region of the country. Solon's father is the major shareholder of this Harbo Group and the consequences will be quite serious for China as a country if this matter is left unsolved. It's very likely that it will also greatly impact the next investment this company will do in the country. Please give me and our country some face and drop this matter. You can rest assured that the Harbo Group will definitely give big compensation. Long Hanwen was silent for a moment and then said, Deputy Mayor Li, please go back. I'll consider this matter first, but let me tell you something. It's impossible if you want me to release that bastard now. You. Li Yutao was a remarkable figure from the government, so how could he not conclude that Long Hanwen didn't want to give him face? Yet, he wasn't angry since he understood Long Hanwen's feelings and situation. Someone maimed the son he cherished and valued the most, and his son's life and death were still in the balance. How could Long Hanwen be able to just drop this matter given his identity? This will be quite the trouble. Eli Yutao bitterly smiled inwardly and finally could only reply helplessly, if so, I'll be waiting for good news from Chief Long, then. When Li Yutao returned to the gazebo, he looked at the two pairs of eyes focusing on him. Then, he reluctantly forced a smile and said, William, it seems that the matter is not easy to resolve. After all, the son of President Long is still lying in the hospital and chance is he may die at any time. In other words, you may have a foreign investor status here, but it was your side who did the deed. Even if President Long didn't act to detain Cal Soland, I'm afraid that it would be the City Public Security Bureau's people who would arrest him. Let's take a step back and take it slow. President Long is rather furious at this time, but I'm sure when his son's injury eases, maybe his anger will disappear. We may be able to resolve this matter smoothly when we come to negotiate again then. Chapter 1197, Staging a Play It took only a day for the enmity budding between the local tycoon Long Group and the multinational corporation Harbo Group to spread out in Star City. It wasn't only limited to those large companies that came to Star City to seek cooperation with the magnificent Tang Corporation, but it was also known to the average people. Everyone was literally sitting still on the bench, waiting to watch this wonderful show of a century. Countless eyes were focused on the Imperial Dragon Manor where the Long family resided, Long Group's HQ, as well as the Long's Dining Hall where the representatives of Harbo Group were currently staying at. Meanwhile, the HQ of the magnificent Tang Corporation and Kong Xia's residence were also not spared from the observation of these many eyes. The news that Li Yutao, the deputy mayor of Star City, and Jiang Fei, the chief of City Public Security Bureau, and lastly William, the director of China's Harbo Group, went to the Imperial Dragon Manor together, quickly spread out in a short time, garnering the attention of these countless eyes to focus there, waiting for the outcome of this wonderful show. IT failed. When the three men left the Imperial Dragon Manor, all forces immediately turned into turmoil. No one believed that Long Hanwen turned out to be so arrogant to refuse to give a senior official some face. They didn't expect that the man would be so headstrong and tough to pick a fight with the Harbo group. However, at this time, another news quickly spread out to the entire star city that Tang Xiao, the owner of magnificent Tang Corporation, 
was said to have returned to Star City and it was rumored that he and the successor of the Long Group, Long Zhengyu, were very close friends. At the Long's Dining Hall The director of China's Harbo Group, William, just returned to the hotel and was about to call the company's major shareholder, Cal Solon's father, when heard the hasty knocks on his door. Come in, said William in a deep voice. A moment later, a black middle-aged man entered the room. He came to William and reported. Sir William, we just received accurate news that the big boss of magnificent Tang Corporation Tang Xiao has returned to Star City from overseas. Mr. Tang is rumored to have a very good friendship with Long Zhengyu of the Long Group and my conjecture is he should have come back for him. William's expression turned extremely ugly instantly. He had received a note of refusal from the magnificent Tang Corporation in regard to the partnership. It was very likely that that the boss of this company was rushing back to stand in the same camp as Long Group. Then again, how should he deal with this Cal Soland bastard? Although he had literally ruined any chance of cooperation between the company and the magnificent Tang Corp, there was also his involvement in inciting that bastard to do so. If he just immediately brought his team to leave China, it was very likely that his father would never let him go scot-free. What should I do? William, who previously wanted to call Cal Solon's father, instantly hesitated for a while. He didn't quickly reply to his subordinate's report, but took out a cigarette and lit it up. While smoking, trains of thoughts filled his mind as he analyzed things in the hope of finding the perfect solution. Ring, ring, ring. Just as he was at a loss and unable to find any way out, the phone he put on the table suddenly rang. He quickly grabbed it and saw that it was an unfamiliar number and hesitated for a while whether to pick it up or not. But finally, he connected and asked, William speaking here, may I know who is this? I'm Tang Xiao from the magnificent Tang Corporation. A calm voice from the phone answered him. William was dumbfounded and his heart was suddenly inundated with a bad feeling. Then, he hurriedly replied, Hello, Mr. Tang. Your call surprised me since I didn't expect it. Oh my god, this is truly a pleasure and honor for me. Mr. William, I'll get straight to the point here. The issue between the Harbo Group and the Long Group has come to my desk. I and Long Zhengyu are friends, but you also come here for my company so I naturally can't stand idly by and do nothing since it happened in Star City with you here as well," said Tang Xiao. If it's convenient with you, I hope you can come to the magnificent Tang Corporation immediately. Let's meet and talk about this. Okay. I'll be right there. William hung up but with a confused face. What exactly is going on? Didn't this Tang Xiao, the big boss of Magnificent Tang Corporation, have created obstacles for me? Why did he call now and looks like he will help me, of all times? At the HQ of the Magnificent Tang Corporation. For black Mercedes-Benz slowly stopped at the gate of the edifice and many people who came in and out of the building shifted their attention to them. Although such a motorcade was often seen coming in the last few days, each of them still garnered the attention of many people. Is there another situation? Many people who passed by had their mouth opened wide after seeing the next scene along with disbelief on their faces. It was because the goddess in their eyes, Kang Xia, the general manager of the magnificent Tang Corporation, quickly got out of the second Mercedes-Benz, before she quickly turned to the other side and personally opened the car's door. Who could be the bigwig that had such a reputation worthy to even make Kong Xia, the GM of Magnificent Tang Corporation, open the door for him or her? However, when Tang Xiao's figure was seen coming out of the car, the shock of these many people who already knew his identity vanished. Although Tang Xiao was like a dragon whose head and tail were always a mystery to the public and it was Kong Xia who handled the business affairs of the company, he was, after all, the owner of the Magnificent Tang Corporation which meant that he was the only person in this world who was qualified to make her open the car's door. Twenty minutes passed by and the news that Tang Xiao, the boss of Magnificent Tang Corporation, entered the HQ building publicly was known to the many interested people. However, when everyone speculated what he would do after returning to his company publicly, 
Another inexplicable scene added more confusion to the already incredible moods these people had. It was because William, the director of China's Harbo Group, actually came to visit the magnificent Tang Corporation's edifice in a hurry. Even the security guards at the gate didn't stop his entry. On the 18th floor of the edifice, Tang Xiu calmly sat in the reception room while holding a cup of hot tea and looked at William, who sat at his opposite side, looking restless and agitated. Then, he slowly spoke, I already know everything about what happened between you and the long group, Mr. William. I must be honest with you, it made me discontent. You came to China and Star City to strike a business deal with my company, yet you picked up a fight and clashed with some local tycoons here. What you did will bring out quite a serious blow to my company's reputation. William forced a wry smile and said, Isn't that too serious a statement, Mr. Tang? Why wouldn't it? Tang Shou sneered. Now everyone knows that your Harbo group came for my company, yet you caused a scene here. Don't tell me that the reputation of my company won't suffer a blow from what you did. If the rest of the other companies were to act like Harbo Group and caused scenes in Star City, I'm sure the public and the average people in Star City will definitely curse us that we've attracted bandits here, no? William was speechless. Tang Xiu's remarks were not pleasant to hear, but he clearly made sense in his reasonings. If the heads of these major companies all over the world really made such scenes in Star City, it was expected that countless people would aim their curses at the magnificent Tang Corporation immediately. The impact it brought toward the company's reputation would indeed be quite a blow should it happen. You have nothing to say on this matter, asked Tang Xiao lightly. William spoke with a bitter voice, your reasoning made sense and I admit that we're at fault on this matter. I personally ask forgiveness for what happened, boss Tang. I'll make sure that the Harbo Group will release a formal apology to the magnificent Tang Corporation publicly, as well as to the Long Group. But if I may, could you help us free Cal Soland and take him back from the Long Group? I suggest that you assign someone to hold a press conference to announce the formal apology first before we head over to the Long Group, to take him back. Tang Xiao nodded and said, Only in this way can I help you meet the big boss of Long Group, Long Hanwen, to free your people. William was about to speak but then turned to his secretary next to him. Draft a formal apology immediately and then hold a press conference to apologize to the magnificent Tang Corporation and Long Group through the media. Understood. As William's secretary left, Tang Xiao immediately looked to have warmed up and was enthusiastic. However, even though William didn't give up trying to pull the conversation to the cooperation topic, Tang Xiao kept avoiding the subject and didn't answer any of his questions on this matter at all. Two hours later, the Harbo Group's press release regarding the apology ended, which made everyone concerned about the incident a bit muddle-headed. The apology to the Long Group was understandable since some of their people were at fault and responsible for severely injuring the successor of the Long Group, Long Zhengyu, but why did they apologize to the magnificent Tang Corporation as well? Was it because they were coming to visit the company, so the apology was meant for the little reputation hit? Immediately after, all the forces heard the news that the boss of Magnificent Tang Corporation, Tang Xiao, and the director of China's Harbo Group, William, just left the Magnificent Tang Corporation, SHQ by car together and headed to the Imperial Dragon Manor. At the Imperial Dragon Manor Long Hanwen was reading the company's document at home and was constantly answering phone calls. Some of them were calling to express their concern and prayers for his son, Long Zhengyu, whereas some were asking for favors and some others were just expressing their anger like him. Shortly put, many people and many forces alike, each with their own agenda, were waiting for the next show to take place. Knock, knock. The door of his study room was knocked and his female secretary came in, reporting respectfully, Boss, Mr. Tang and William of Harbo Group are visiting. Long Hanwen slowly got up. Just as he stepped out of the door of the manor's living room, he saw Tang Xiao and William standing in the yard. He didn't even spare a glance at the latter and headed straight towards Tang Xiao, greeting smilingly. Why are you here, Tang Xiao? Don't tell me that you're now acting as a lobbyist for some people? 
I'll speak honestly since you've mentioned it, Uncle Long, said Tang Xiao with a smile. What the people from Harbo Group have done was wrong and I know they're at fault as well. But they're coming for my company, after all, so I hope Uncle Long can give me face and free this Cal Soland guy. Tang Xiao, you and Zheng Yu are friends. He has been severely injured and hospitalized. Even now he's still in a coma. Yet, why do you still help outsiders? Uncle Long, I myself was very reluctant to do this. I hate what they did, but my company can't escape the fact that the incident is related to us. Have you not heard the news that my company has informed them and refused the cooperation already, said Tang Xiao reluctantly. Chapter 1198, Commitment The experienced William saw Tang Xiao try his best and used nearly everything to convince Long Hanwen with various soft and hard arguments, and even praises, yet Long Hanwen didn't budge. It made William secretly thank him for doing his best. Stop trying to persuade me, Tang Xiao. That man injured my son gravely and he has to pay a terrible price for that. Long Hanwen clenched his fists with a grim face. Tang Xiao exchanged glances with William, then immediately gritted his teeth, stretched out a finger and said in a deep voice, Uncle Long, you just said that you want them to pay compensation, so this is my offer. What do you think about 100 million yuan compensation for Long Zheng Yu's medical fee? Long Hanwen's eyes narrowed and he sneered. <laughs> the Longs have never lacked money. 200 million, Tang Xiao went on with a deep voice. Long Hanwen was silent for a moment and then sneered yet again. I already told you the Longs are not short on money. 200 million yuan is nothing to us. Tang Xiao's eyes turned a bit red and he shouted, 1 billion. This is the maximum amount my magnificent Tang Corporation can offer you. Uncle Long, I regard you as an uncle and this is me expressing my respect because of my deep relationship with Long Zheng Yu. But things have already happened and Zheng Yu is gravely injured. Even if you insist on burying Cal Soland along with him, it's only to allay your anger. You will get no substantial benefits. We're all businessmen and gaining profits is what we always pursue. The Long Group is indeed big, yet it's still not that easy to gain hundreds of billions of yuan. I give you face and benefits today, so this is definitely killing two birds with one stone. Long Hanwen was silent and took out a cigarette pack from his pocket. After taking one and lighting it up, he took a deep puff before pinching and extinguishing the cigarette in the ashtray. He then tilted up his head to speak to Tang Xiao. You're right. I'm a businessman and I can't just let the money pass. On the account of our close relationship, I don't need 1 billion, Tang Xiao, but 800 million is the lowest I can accept. Else you can expect to see Cao Salin's dead body. Tang Xiao took a deep breath and shot a look at William's complicated expression. Then, he nodded and said, I'll remember this favor, Uncle Long. You can expect to have the money transferred to you soon. And, when will you release this Cal Soland, then? When I receive the money, answered Long Hanwen. Tang Xiao and William stayed no longer and walked out of the villa. When they came out at the front gate of the Long family's villa, William spoke with an apologetic look, I'm really sorry, Boss Tang. We caused you to suffer quite a loss, but I'll definitely convey it to. Hold on. Tang Xiao raised his hand to interrupt him. I have nothing to lose. Don't tell me your Harbo group is thinking that I'll pay the 800 million yuan ransom for you? Pardon. William was dumbfounded and his expression instantly froze, looking at Tang Xiao as though seeing a devil. It took him a long time to snap out of the shock. You just saw that I've done my part and took the favor in order to help your Harbo group already. Tang Xiao sneered grimly. But let me tell you something. My magnificent Tang Corporation is a business group, not some charity. Losing money for the sake of someone else's life is not our responsibility nor is it our obligation. If you want to have Cal Soland back alive, you gotta hurry to contact the top executives of Harbo Group or any of his family members. But if you decide to forego his life, then this is how far I can go to help you. 
William's mouth opened, but his throat was as though being blocked by something and he was unable to say anything. Tang Xiao lit up a cigarette and continued, Mr. William, you're well aware of Chinese customs and culture, so you should understand how precious a debt of gratitude is among us. I took this matter on my shoulders and now owe a favor to the Long family. You can expect to see the announcement which I'm going to release to the media that my company has nothing to do with this matter anymore, if you don't want to put out 800 million yuan. However, I'd like to advise you out of goodwill. The Long family has set the fixed number for the compensation already, so if your Harbo group refuses to pay it and the issue drags on and gets bigger, I'm sure Long Hanwen will go straight to blow this matter up to the public. By that time, you can expect the Harbo's reputation to go down the drain and become the laughingstock of the international business community. Disbelief overflowed in William's eyes as he responded with a changed expression. He originally thought that Tang Xiao was trying to help him by taking him to meet Long Hanwen. It never occurred to him that Tang Xiao actually dug a pit for him to directly jump into. He wouldn't have come along with him had he known that it would be like this. Clenching his fists tightly, William's angry eyes glared at Tang Xiao and said, You said you were going to help us, Boss Tang. Yet you actually dug a pit for me to jump into? I don't like your tone, William. Tang Xiao frowned. Do you think Long Hanwen will promise you to release Kao Saland without me? You have injured his son gravely and now he's still in a coma with his fate unknown. He may even die at any time. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and life for a life. That's how the Chinese face such issues. Further, Kao Saland may indeed be the one who made Long Zheng Yu seriously injured, but it was you who pulled the strings from the back. Am I right? Do you think you can escape responsibility if he dies in China? Hell. Were you trying to help me or harming me? William angrily yelled, It's 800 million, for God's sake. Such a number even in Chinese Yuan is not a small figure. Now I'm getting really angry with you speaking to me like that, William, replied Tang Xiao indifferently. I helped you out of goodwill, yet you pay back with a bite. Is this your way of doing things, huh? Do you think Long Hanwen and his Long group are really short on money and lack 800 million? As far as I know, just their share in the development of the Star City's new metro will provide them at least 8 billion in revenue. Yet you yell at me that I've dug a pit for you for such trivial 800 million? William fell into silence and thought that Tang Xiao's argument was reasonable. 800 million yuan to the Long group was indeed nothing. He had sent some people to investigate the Long Group's details after he instigated Cal Solon to deal with Long Genu, and made him severely injured. But the results made him startled as he never expected that the trivial dispute would even provoke such a fearsome entity like the Long Group. Still, he didn't have 800 million at hand. Likely even the higher-ups in his company's HQ would skin him alive if he were to bring it up to them. What should I do? This thought filled his mind as to how to solve this problem, and the dilemma struck him for a while. After observing William's constant change in expression, Tang Xiao lightly said, I'm well aware that this incident is rather unexpected to you, Mr. William. But this is a grave matter as it involves someone's life, after all. If you feel that it's not easy to handle, I have an idea that can help you. What is it? William hurriedly asked after staring blankly. Long Zhengyu is quite an expert martial artist himself, but Cal Soland can injure him seriously, which means that he's a practitioner. Or rather, a cultivator. I don't think he became a cultivator by himself, so there must be some powerful people or his elders at home who taught him. This matter is related to his life, so I don't think you need to contact anyone from the Harbo Group's HQ. Just contact his family directly and I'm sure such a trivial 800 million are nothing to them. William's eyes shone and he felt a bit excited inwardly. His life was at stake before. He was sure that he couldn't bring this up to the Harbo Group's HQ, but he forgot that Cal Solon's father was the major shareholder of the company and also a very powerful big boss himself. Boss Tang His eyes suddenly wore a complicated expression as William looked at Tang Xiao. 
Money is just an insignificant thing to me, Mr. William. Tang Xiao indifferently said, let alone a billion, I can easily get tens of billions if I want to. I'm sure you're perfectly aware of how fast my company can make money, aren't you? Yeah, William nodded without a word. Since you understand my company's money-making power, you should also be aware of the fact that I don't need to set you up for 800 million yuan given my identity. If I were to collude with Long Hanwen to push you into the pit, the amount you'd have to take out wouldn't be just 800 million. Why do you think Long Hanwen would cut 200 million yuan when I offered him 1 billion before? 200 million was on the account on my face and also a favor I used. Indeed. It was the point William missed to recall before. Now that he heard Tang Xiao mention it, he carefully analyzed it and felt that Tang Xiao was right. In actuality, the difference between 1 billion and 800 million was not much. Tang Xiao offered 1 billion for compensation and Long Hanwen directly cut 200 million yuan, which showed that the number was just trivial to both of them. Could it be that I misunderstand Tang Xiao? Meaning, he actually has such good intentions from the beginning to help me solve the trouble? William's mind raced fast with such thoughts. Eventually, an ashamed expression was gradually cast on his face. He slightly bowed and said, I was at fault and yet I treated you unfairly, Boss Tang. I deeply apologize now and hope that you can forgive me. You have done so much for me, so you can rest assured that I'll immediately contact Kel Solon's father right away, the major shareholder of Harbo Group. Cal Solon's father is actually the major shareholder of your Harbo group, asked Tang Xiao in surprise. He has such high status, but how did he become your? Cal just graduated, so his father ordered him to follow me to study. William quickly explained, but he's a bit impulsive and, in the two years he has been following me, he has caused many scenes already. But I used to help him deal with the troubles, so he doesn't know how to stop and restrain himself. I really had no idea that he would cause such big trouble this time. Tang Xiao sneered inwardly after hearing this, but he looked unperturbed on the outside. Well, I think you need to contact his father fast since he has such an identity. I'm afraid Long Hanwen will kill him otherwise should he think you'll delay. You may not believe it, but the Longs are the most powerful family in Star City that even the government officials are wary of. There won't be any big repercussions and troubles for him even if he kills Cal Soland. Chapter 1199 Rumors Tang Xiao bid farewell to William and directly returned to the magnificent Tang Corporation's HQ. What he needed to do now was wait for the news. If William could take out 800 million yuan, then the Longs wouldn't pick up trouble with them anymore, at least on the surface. However, the machinations that had been set up for them would bring up more troubles for these people. As dusk came, William personally contacted Tang Xiao and asked his accompany to the Imperial Dragon Villa. After the 800 million yuan had been transferred to Long Hanwen's account, the latter made a call to let Kel Soland go. Shall we stay and have dinner together, Uncle Long? Tang Xiao smiled and looked at Long Hanwen. How can I dine with this guy in my place when my son is still lying in the hospital now, replied Long Hanwen coldly. And you, Tang Xiao. You're a good big boss. You had better avoid to have any dealings with the Harbo group in the future. Be wary and careful towards these cruel and ruthless people for they will bite you sooner or later. Ugh. Tang Xiao's smile immediately froze and he glanced fast at the awkward-looking William. He then yawned and hurriedly said, Well, we'll disturb you no longer since you're busy, Uncle Long. But shortly put, I'd like to thank you for your time as well as giving me face. Immediately after, he and William left the Long family's manor awkwardly. William then spoke to him with an apologetic look, I need to apologize to you again, Boss Tang. I shouldn't have misunderstood you before. Now that we've settled this problem, could you consider the cooperation between my company and yours? You know, we came to China and Star City in good faith and goodwill, wishing to cooperate with your magnificent Tang Corporation so we can earn massive fortune together. Tang Xiao waved and said, Apology accepted, but I chose not to cooperate with your Harbo Group. 
I may not a big man myself, but my words still have weight and I still have the integrity to uphold as well. My company has issued that announcement. If I were to take it back, wouldn't it mean that my company has no credibility? If I were really to take this move, which major company around the world would dare to cooperate with my company again later? William was silent for a while and then replied with a bleak expression, I'll no longer pester Boss Tang about this matter since you've made up your mind. I just hope that you can consider providing a chance of cooperation with Harbo Group and other businesses in the future. All right. Tang Xiao nodded. An hour later, William took more than ten of his men and quickly returned to the Long's dining hall. But as just as he strode into the site's entrance, he saw many people jam-packed in the lobby on the first floor. Take a look at what happened. Being in a foul mood, he didn't want to stay in the lobby and issued the order. As the director of China's Harbo Group, he had made disappointing errors which led to the announcement from the magnificent Tang Corporation that they would never cooperate with his company, a failure which became his main responsibility alone. Make way. The subordinates William just sent squeezed into the crowd and shouted loudly at the crowd around. His voice made William, who was about to leave, halt his pace abruptly. Shortly after, William's face was flushed red. What he saw there was Cal Soland lying on the floor like a dead dog. His condition was too horrible to look at, causing William to wish he could find any crack to drill in at once. This was really shameful, a total disgrace. Cal Solon's condition was so horrible, with the tendons of his feet and arms cut off and two of his front teeth gone. He wouldn't have been able to recognize him immediately if he wasn't familiar with him. But the most conspicuous and important thing was, Cal Solon's upper body was naked and red characters were written on his chest, he who insults others must be humiliated. Take him. William didn't want to stay here even a second longer and shouted loudly with a grim face. He turned and strode towards the elevator quickly. He didn't notice that some dressy and foppish young men in suits were fixedly staring at him with sinister eyes. At the magnificent Tang Corp. The moment Tang Xiao returned, he immediately ordered some people to publicize what happened today. In just less than two hours, the heads of companies all over the world heard about today's matter. The announcement made everyone admire Tang Xiao, and even many of these companies decided that the cooperation with Magnificent Tang Corporation was a priority. In the spacious and bright GM's office, as Tang Xiao sat on the soft couch while Kong Xia was about to serve a cup of hot tea for him, a figure suddenly appeared in front of Tang Xiao out of the blue. News just came from the US, Grand Master. What is it about? asked Tang Xiao. It's about the three companies, Cupid, Dandelion, and Sava groups. We've already investigated the details of their owners. Cupid is deeply related to a certain U.S. politician who's its biggest shareholder, whereas the big boss behind Dandelion is a man with considerable status in the Stygian Club. Even some Stygian Club experts have been protecting the representative of the Dandelion group who came to China. The Sava group's details are rather complicated, but we have determined that two of its shareholders are deeply related to the pyramid. Tang Xiao squinted and sneered. <laughs> what deep backgrounds they have. Let these dogs fight with their own kind. And secretly assassinate the experts of Dandelion Company and strike some of the Harbo ones. Mix their bodies together to make it like they're fighting each other. Then, make it so that the directors of these two companies appear at the same time. Only targeting Dandelion, asked Tangan to confirm the order. The assassination is only for the Dandelion, but you are to assault some from the Cupid and Sava in secret. Leave them at the Long family's Imperial Dragon Manor. We'll wait for the next development and watch the show afterward. Tang Xiao went on. Understood. Tangan replied and then vanished. Kong Xia brought the hot tea and came to Tang Xiao's front. After looking around, a forced wry smile appeared on her beautiful face as she hesitantly spoke, I'm kind of feeling uncomfortable, boss. What makes you feel so? asked Tang Xiao with a puzzled face. You always have such a mysterious person around you that I can't even notice. 
Someone keeps appearing out of the blue in front of you. If it keeps going on like this, I won't dare to be intimate with you again later for fear that someone suddenly appeared and just watched us when we are doing things. Tang Xiao was stunned and immediately wore a strange expression. He understood who this person and someone Kong Xia just mentioned was. He neglected this issue and couldn't realize it prior to this, but her reminder made him realize that it was rather improper to have Tang and keep hiding in the dark following him all the time. It must be noted that he had many women. If he were to have some activities with them and Tang and was around. In that case, the thought sent a chill run down his back. He reached out to pull Kong Xia over and gently hugged her. It's indeed my negligence. But hiding in the void is Tang An's talent, and it's even quite difficult for me to find her if she doesn't want to be noticed. All right, I'll arrange an array first so she won't easily observe us when we got some happy time later. Or you can just arrange the array in advance, at least in the bedroom we stay in, said Kong Xia helplessly. Else, I'd always have goosebumps haunting me. Tang Xiao hollowly laughed and nodded. Anyhow, what plans did you discuss with Long Hanwen, though? asked Kong Xia. It seems that there are tons of good shows to watch. Long Zhengyu is my friend and some people injured him gravely. Tang Xiao said, there's no way I can just sit back and do nothing. They dare to assault him here, so they must pay the price. However, our company is now in the limelight and at the forefront of the wave so I can't just do anything that can harm its reputation. That's why I can only deal with this Harbo group in secret. Is there anything I can do to help? asked Kong Xia. You don't have to do anything else for the time being. Tang Xiao shook his head. Also, Hao Lei will come to Star City in a few days. I will need your advice when I discuss something with her later. Is it about the auction? asked Kong Xia hurriedly. Tang Xiao nodded and continued, that's right. It's indeed about the auction. And I also have some other ideas in mind. The magnificent Tang Corporation only has a few products, so I think it would be great to establish the biggest auction house in the world along with the Grand Fortune Jewelry. And I also have a way to spice up the situation of the auction house later. With what methods, exactly? Kong Xia asked hurriedly. Medicinal pills, Tang Xiao answered with a smile. You want to sell those pills to outsiders? Kong Xia was surprised. I'm going to develop two types of pills, explained Tang Xiao. One is a drug that can temper the body and another one that can prolong life. These two pills won't be very effective, but it will be very beneficial to whoever takes it for many years. So these two pills will be the main and finale articles of every auction, then asked Kong Xia again. That's right. Tang Xiao nodded. I'm sure just these two pills are enough to make people all over the world go crazy. However, these two pills will need to be packaged and sold under the brand name of healthcare products. I can already see those super rich people all over the world flocking here. Kong Xia nodded. I'm quite amazing, am I not? Tang Xiao smilingly said. Kong Xia kissed him on the lips and faintly said, You know, I thought you were a guy who was oblivious of the immensity of the world when I first received your call. I thought you were playing a prank on me intentionally back then. Back when I came to Star City and first met you, I kind of felt very disappointed and thought that you were too young. However, I'm now glad and feeling fortunate for the decision I made before. I was so dirt poor and very weak at that time. Tang Xiao replied with a smile, To be honest with you, the success and development of the magnificent Tang Corp for these two years can never be separated from you. It should be I who should be grateful for being able to get such a cherished treasure like you. Kong Xia smiled. Well, Andy is also a precious treasure. Ugh. Tang Xiao's expression stiffened and suddenly, a headache struck his head. Chapter 1200, Losing Patience The Long's Dining Hall Lights brightly illuminated the wide corridor. The winter had come, 
but the corridor was as warm as in spring and the bonsais and potted plants around the corner still looked lush and grew well. However, a faint bloody smell permeated the air in the corridor and brought with it a hidden killing atmosphere. To make it worse, some ghostly figures also had destroyed all the monitoring equipment in the corridor. The situation caused the four security guards of the Long's dining hall to come to check as they appeared in the corner. Mindless Vandalism The four people finally reached this conclusion. But there was something else they couldn't believe, however. There were six CCTVs in the corridor, four of which were installed at the center aside from the two others that were installed at the end of the corridor. Yet, none of it captured anyone's figure or shadow before they were destroyed. This was unusual, as bizarre as it could get. No matter how abnormal it was, the scene when some people destroyed the camera should have been captured by the monitors at the center even if both cameras at the end of the corridor were destroyed at the same time. Even if six people destroyed all the six cameras here at the same time, there should have been some footage that captured what happened before they destroyed the cameras. Just as the four security guards felt uneasiness and continued their inspection around, one of them suddenly found that the door of the suit number 4018 was not locked and opened it. Dalong, head inside and check it. The sturdy middle-aged man gave an order to his companion beside him as his hand carefully opened the unlocked door. Gasp. When the man called Dalong entered the room, his pupils suddenly shrunk with disbelief. A bit of fear that inundated his eyes was evident with the reflection of the light. Dead bodies, six, in total. The complexion of the other three men changed. They quickly rushed into the room and saw six dead bodies lying in a pool of blood in the large room. Two of which were bodies of black men, one Caucasian, and three others of Asian descent. Call the cops quickly! Dalong shouted. The sturdy middle-aged man hurriedly stopped everyone and said in a deep voice, We can't. Let's notify Cappy first. The homicide occurred in our hotel and we need him to deal with it. The homicide happened in our hotel, Brother Wang, interrupted Dalong quickly. Why don't we hurry up and report to the cops? Maybe they can investigate the killer quickly. Humph, the burly middle-aged man coldly hummed. The homicide happened in our hotel and it would make our hotel lose tremendous reputation should it be announced, got it? Do you understand what kind of event is happening at this time? The representatives of many major companies from various countries are visiting Star City now, while our Long's Dining Hall is the most luxurious hotel in Star City. Do you have any idea how many of these foreign forces are staying here? Do you want to see this thing get bigger or something? Dalong was oblivious to such aftermath and finally said, after hesitating for a while, then we all listen to you, Brother Wang. Quickly after, the security guards at the Long's Dining Hall confirmed the identities of the six dead bodies, from the Dandelion and Harbo group. Only one of the dead bodies, which was slightly hidden in the innermost bed that was from Harbo, whereas the other five were from Dandelion. The two head representatives of both parties were stunned when they received the notification from the security guards. But after just one and a half hours, the representative of Dandelion Group contacted Tang Xiao. In the cafe near Southgate Town, Tang Xiao, who wore casual attire and a duckbill cap, calmly sat in the corner while savoring his coffee. Sitting across from him was the head representative of Dandelion Group who looked grim with looming killing intent in his eyes, as his eyes fixedly focused on Tang Xiao. What exactly do you want to do, then? After a long time, Tang Xiao asked the man slowly. Yezek clenched his fists and said, The Dandelion Group truly wishes to secure a cooperation deal with your company, Mr. Tang. But your company just released the rules that forbid us to act recklessly in China. That's why I keep holding back my anger and dare not take revenge on Harbo Group. I do know the fact that you're Long Zhengyu's friend, but since the Longs seem to be afraid to pick up a fight with Harbo, do you agree if we take their place to avenge young Master Long? There was a strange look in Tang Xiao's eyes. It never came to him that this Yezek guy was quite a smart man and could put forward such smart excuses. 
As for his consent on this matter, he wholeheartedly approved it inwardly, but he feigned to be in deep thought, nonetheless. After staying silent for a long while, he shook his head and said, Mr. Yezek, it stands to reason that I'm actually furious after seeing Long Zhengyu being badly injured by them. But you came to China and Star City due to my company, and it will make me feel bad if I cannot guarantee your safety here. But are you sure your men were killed by someone from Harbo Group? I'm absolutely sure, said Yezek in a deep voice, I just sent someone to check the body and it was indeed the work of William's men. They even went in a hurry and thus, left a body of one of their people. There must be a motive for the murder. I myself don't think that the Harbo group would kill your people for no reason. Tang Shou said. My side has grudges with Harbo group as both sides have been engaged in rivalries. That William Bastard has literally been shut out from your approval, which barred his company to have any cooperation with your magnificent Tang Corporation. I'm guessing that they must be worried that my dandelion company will strike a deal with your company and thus, the chief reason they want to destroy this opportunity. Tang Shou's expression changed and he asked in a deep tone, are you sure about that? I dare not say I'm 100% sure, but 9 out of 10 am very positive on this one, Yezek affirmed. In actuality, I already sent some men to investigate the details of the dandelion group. Your company is quite powerful and reliable and a good candidate for the partnership. Tang Xiao said, I already had the intention to discuss with you about the cooperation, but I never thought that this unexpected situation to occur. William is truly a damned bastard. He even dares to destroy the chance of cooperation between us. After hearing this, an excited and surprised expression immediately painted Yezek's face and he hurriedly asked, So, do you agree with it, Mr. Tang? You have my consent, but under one request. Tang Shou said, If your dandelion group wants to continue the cooperation with my company, the operation you launch against William must be carried out in secret. Else, no matter how eager I am to cooperate with you, I'm afraid I can't withstand public opinion and can only give it up. Please rest your worries on this one, Mr. Tang. Yezek spoke in a deep voice, everything will be done in the dark without any noise. I can even pull the Cupid group to our side in order to deal with Harbo. No one from the Harbo group will leave China alive this time. If you can do it silently, you can shift the blame to the Long group since they already have grudges with Harbo, said Tang Xiao. Yezek was surprised. But you and the Long group. What I care about is my company's partner. My company may have some cooperation with the Long Group in some fields, but they are nothing to speak of compared to the following cooperation we're about to have. Tang Xiao replied lightly. Yezek got up and bent his body forward. After shaking hands with Tang Xiao, he excitedly spoke, You truly are an outstanding businessman, Mr. Tang. I'll convey your goodwill to my employer and also develop a thorough and rigorous plan to ensure that William and the Harbo Group's people he brought here disappear silently from the earth. Early the next morning, Tang Xiao was having breakfast at home when Kong Xia came in a hurry and placed a table in front of him and spoke in a low voice. What should happen just took place, boss. Tang Xiao narrowed his eyes and asked, What about Tang An? She's outside, Kong Xia replied. Tang Xiao then recalled that he had arranged an array to cover the house. Even if Tang An was able to shuttle anywhere through the void, she was likely unable to easily enter the array he had arranged. Immediately after, he turned on the tablet and a curved arc outlined on the corner of his mouth after seeing the footage being played. What about the longs? How are they doing? Everything went according to your plan. Kong Xia replied. Long Hanwen sent messengers to invite the head representatives of the Cupid and Sava groups to the Imperial Dragon Manor, to interrogate them in person on why they would send some people to attack his Long family and kill many people there. The evidence is beyond dispute and impossible to argue. Simply put, they're going crazy. It would be very difficult to get rid of everyone from Harbo just relying on the Dandelion group alone. But things will go smoothly if Dandelion, Cupid, and Sava join hands. I can tell that William may be able to escape at that time, 
but I'm sure it will be very difficult for him to flee from Star City. True that. Kong Xia nodded. Also, William is now hiding in a residential building in Star City's new metro. That place is quite covert since it hasn't been handed over to its owner. Further, he only has four men left as of now, but two of them have been injured. All right. Inform the Dandelions people to release the news that it was Harbo's people who killed the Cupid and Sava group's members, and then left the bodies at the Long family's residence. The purpose was to incite hostilities between the two parties with the Long group as an attempt to use both parties' hands to deal with the Longs. Kong Xia's eyes shone and she immediately left the room in strides. Daytime in a certain building in the newly built area of the new metro of Star City that hadn't been handed over to its owner, William was sitting exhausted on the cold floor with a face full of bloodstains and eyes nursing a grievance. He messed up. Everything was messed up. He felt like there was a large invisible net that had already covered him and his men with a huge plot already set in motion, against him. Where the hell is that bastard Cal Soland now? He took some heavy and deep breaths and looked at his stalwart subordinate seven plus meters away from him. The sturdy man answered, he's being treated at the Star City Chinese Medical Hospital due to his serious injuries. But we got the news that some people picked him up and his whereabouts are unknown now. He's just, missing. Who the hell did this? The bad feeling inside William's heart grew stronger. 